ordinary baby? No, a very special baby. A baby of unusual interest to a number of doctors, to nurses, and especially to Ronnie Cole and his family. There's quite a story attached to little James, and as American Cancer Society volunteers, we're part of it, each in our own way. You'll see why. The story takes place in one of America's most exciting cities. Ronnie Cole is a musician working in New Orleans' famed French Quarter. Five years ago, he... Well, maybe I'd better let Ronnie tell you. Well, I was against the whole thing at first, but my wife and daughter had already made up their minds, and, well, it was really no contest. You can't fight with the two of them. But, well, let's, let's start at the beginning. My daughter Rhonda was 15 years old at the time, and she was working as a candy striper. That's, well, that's like a nurse's aide at Charity Hospital in New Orleans. That's where, uh, well, that's where she first saw this baby, who was a little over half a year old at the time, with a big smile, big eyes, no hair, no color in his face, and a million-dollar personality. Let's face it, Rhonda just looked at him and could see he loved life, and he wanted to live, and he was going to do it, no matter what. Trouble was, the matter was... Neuroblastoma. Neuroblastoma, a form of cancer that occurs in infants and children. Not very often, thank God. Because the chances for survival are not very good. So whenever the question of James came up, the fearful fact of neuroblastoma hovered in the background. You know the way kids, <laughs> kids will bring home stray pets? Well, Rhonda, <laughs> she fell in love with this abandoned baby, bumps and all, and she wanted to bring him home. First thing you gotta know is, well, Vi got hooked. She's my wife. They just wanted to bring him home for a weekend. I threw cold water on the idea. Not, well, not that I'd want to bring him home, but look, look at it practically. Our youngest was about nine years old at that time, and we'd already brought up five kids, and, well, I thought we just about had enough of that scene. Plus the fact if the treatment wasn't successful, well, there just wasn't too much on the positive side. Here's one more. Suppose the state wouldn't let us adopt them. I'll tell you, all the odds were against us, except two, Vi and Rhonda. They kept saying all they wanted to do was bring them home for two days. The two days turned out to be, well, it was right at Christmas time. And he was, well, he was just a little over a year old then. And it was, a, it was an amazing thing to see this baby digging the Christmas tree for the first time in his life. But with us, we, we never heard a peep out of him. It was like, well, it was like God was telling him, cool it. <laughs> All that kid did was laugh and keep his big eyes open and his big mouth shut. <laughs> I'll tell you, it was really one beautiful weekend. I've mentioned that the odds are not favorable for children with neuroblastoma, but words and numbers have a different sound when they're converted into people and feelings. Neuroblastoma happens rarely, so does Wilms' tumor another type of cancer occurring in children. Yet, thanks to advances in chemotherapy, we are now able to save most of the children afflicted with Wilms' tumor as compared to a few years ago. Then it was almost as deadly as neuroblastoma. I think, too, that we are all now aware of the tremendous strides being made against children's acute leukemia. Once it was hopeless, but now the disease is being controlled more and more. Young patients have been freed of leukemia for 5, 10, even 15 years. And doctors for the first time are speaking in terms of cure. The fight against cancer in children is being waged as hard and as successfully as cancer among adults. You, as volunteers in the American Cancer Society, have taken on the responsibility of seeing that our scientists must not want for funds in their work against this cruel enemy. The enemy is not something unknown and vague. It's cancer. Well, that Christmas weekend decided it for me. That baby never went back to the hospital except naturally for treatments. Because, well, he was a very, very sick boy still. But the longer he lived, well, the more his chances improved. At least we were thinking, now he could make it. And believe me, he would win. He had that desire. He just... Well, it just seemed to grow so fast and so healthy being around the other kids, just being able to get out in the fresh air and having all of us love him. You know, he's as much our blood as all the other kids, and I, I mean that's just the way I feel about it. 
we're all very, very proud of him. He, well, he makes me feel good just when he looks at me and calls me daddy. He was destined to live and be healthy. I don't care what the doctors or anyone else thought when he was born. Because this kid's got more life, more personality, and more energy, and more knowing how to get in trouble than any other 20 kids in the world. You know, he's five years old now, and he never stops going from the time he wakes up in the morning till he conks out at night. He's all boy, and more than, well, more than anything, he's got a desire to live. And the people we can thank are well, the doctors and the research people, and of course, God. That's what made it all possible. He wanted to live, and he has. Oh, one other thing. Most people think of Friday the 13th as being a bad luck day, or the number 13 as being bad luck. Well, I've always thought of Friday the 13th as being a good luck day. That's when Vi and I were married, and that's the day that the doctors at Charity Hospital finally gave Vi and myself the good news about James. He's A-OK -okay and here to stay. Every day brings more and more hope where cancer is concerned. You wonderful volunteers are the people who are doing the work that will help make our ultimate hopes a reality. I'd like to thank you for your efforts in this crusade and wish you every success. Remember, we all want to wipe out cancer in your lifetime. Thank you and God bless you. This video is brought to you by the concluding chapter of Crawford, a comprehensive research guide to Joan Crawford, www.theconcludingchapterofcrawford.com. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.